The Emperor tried to get this frail old man to renounce his faith, but instead what he got was a miracle so incredible, many people watching converted to Christianity. In early 162 AD, an Emperor Marcus Aurelius was the next to rule over Rome. Marcus's father died when he was three and he was raised by his grandmother. From a young age, he dedicated himself to wrestling and boxing, which then developed into an obsession to learn how to fight in armor, which would later prove useful as emperor because his reign was filled with military conquest. He was fierce and merciless towards Christians because they refused to worship him as emperor, as well as refusing to worship other gods and partake in the sacrifices which were expected of everyone living in the Roman Empire. The things that happened under his rule were so inhumane that onlookers could hardly even watch. They shuddered in horror while witnessing the atrocities before them. On important days such as the Emperor's birthday, it was custom to have a big event in which Christians would be placed in an arena and exposed to a variety of wild and ferocious animals. One notable martyr was that of Polycarp, who was a direct disciple of the Apostle John, who was a direct disciple of Jesus. Polycarp, when he heard of the things happening near him, wanted to remain in the city and encourage his friends, but the majority of people who knew him and loved him urged him to leave the city. After much convincing, he finally decided to listen and he went not that far from the city to a small quiet house in the country. There he spent most of his times praying for all his friends. He also prayed for all the different churches all over the world and he would pretty much do this every day from early morning all the way tonight. It was while he was doing his usual prayers, three days before he was going to be arrested, that he had a vision. In his vision, his pillow all of a sudden burst into flames and he turned to his friends and he said, hmm, I must be going to be burnt alive. The Roman soldiers had been ordered to look for Polycarp and they weren't giving up their search. So Polycarp ended up fleeing from one farm to another with the Roman soldiers being not that far behind him. When they got there, they found a couple of young boys hiding in the home. They arrested them and after interrogating them under torture, they confessed to the whereabouts of where Polycarp had fled to. When they finally reached him, they found him in bed in the attic and even though he could have attempted to flee again, he just decided God's will be done. As soon as he heard them arrive, he went down and chatted with them. All the soldiers couldn't believe how old and how calm he was and they were surprised that the arrest of such a frail 86 year old man was so urgent. The whole situation was unusually peaceful. Polycarp offered to make them all food which he gave them as much as they wanted. He then asked if he could have just one last hour in prayer uninterrupted. They looked at each other and they thought well it couldn't hurt and it's late already so what's one more hour gonna hurt? He thanked them and he immediately went to his knees and started praying. All the soldiers, as they heard the fervency of his prayers, began to feel sorry that they were the ones to have to capture such a gentle old man. Polycarp prayed for every person he could possibly remember that he had ever come in contact with, whether great or small. And when he was done, the soldiers arrested him and took him back to the city. When he got there, one of the leading soldiers came out to meet him and they tried to reason with him saying that all he needed to do was say that Caesar is Lord and then it'll all be over. There's no harm in just saying it. Do the little offering of incense and call it a day. But Polycarp just remained silent. And the soldier urged him even more, saying it would save his life, but Polycarp refused. And after gentle persuasion didn't work, he forced him out of the cart and dragged him, hurting his shin, to the arena where he would stand before the governor with thousands of people watching. It was so loud and there was so much cheering that you couldn't even hear the person talking next to you. The governor got everyone to quiet down and he looked down at Polycarp. You're an old man. Have respect for your years. Swear an oath by the luck of Caesar. Admit you are wrong. You and all your Christian friends. Polycarp started to get an angry look on his face. He looked around as everyone roared and cheered. The governor said, take an oath and I will let you go. Go on, despise your Christ. He looked around as people went silent to hear his response. 86 years I have served him and he has never once wronged me. How then can I blaspheme my king who has saved me? The governor then threatened that if he didn't do what he said, he would throw him to the lions. But Polycarp still would not budge. He then said, well, if you think so lightly of the lions, why don't I burn you to death? Polycarp looked up and he answered the governor with full confidence. The fire you threatened me cannot burn for very long, but you are unaware of the flames of future judgment and everlasting torment which is in store for the ungodly. Why do you go on wasting time? Bring out what you have in mind to do. The governor looked dumbfounded and couldn't believe what he was hearing. He then turned to the crowd and yelled, You heard this man, he has admitted that he is a Christian. The whole crowd burst into roaring and cheering and everyone began chanting, Burn him, burn him, burn him. They immediately began setting up piles of wood. When the stake was ready, they took off Polycarp's outer clothes and they were about to nail him to the wood when he assured them that he wouldn't move. So they tied him to the wood with rope instead. Before they started the fire, he looked up to the sky and began praying. Just as he finished his prayer, the wood 
burst into flames as they set it alight. But unbelievably, the whole arena saw a light in the middle of the fire, and inside the fire was a hollow chamber, like a wall surrounding him, and Polycarp just stood inside, untouched. Everyone was in awe and amazed at what they were witnessing, but that quickly turned into anger as they realized not even a hair on his body was being burned. So one of the soldiers ran up and pierced him with a sword. Right then, such a great amount of blood came out of him that it put out the fire. Polycarp then slowly passed away, not from the flames, but from the sword. But not satisfied that they couldn't burn him, they then proceeded to destroy his body in the flames like they originally intended. In the end, Polycarp's faith and steadfastness through prayer proved stronger than the flames that consumed his body. His example continues to inspire Christians around the world to remain loving and faithful to God, no matter the cost.